surprised that the room isn't packed with this <laughs> title. I thought that this would definitely bring everybody. Um, it, it's not as daunting a title as it sounds. Um, we all know what elliptical curve fitting is. Uh, do we have a, or one of these that's not down? Where's Cameron? He always has one. Um, we all know what elliptical curve fitting is. Uh, we all remember probably what algebra is. And a generalized eigensystem is just a system where um, all the vectors are multiplied by things which do not change their direction. So, um, and what I'm going to talk about is making elliptical models out of data from uh, corneal samples and then applying those models to learn things about what's going on with, um, with surgical stuff. So uh, DSEC, DALK, PKP, all of those things involve uh, cutting corneal tissue with a microkeratome or with a femtosecond laser. And these, these tissues, once cut, um, have particular shapes which are not necessarily round and do not necessarily have the exact edges that, that we might intend them to. And so these can be modeled uh, mathematically in order to learn more about what those shapes are. Those shapes can then be evaluated with ray tracing or other methods to determine what might be the best um, surgical methods in cutting those tissues. Uh, in general, conic sections um, can be used to model uh, things in the eye. And in particular, the ellipse uh, is one of the more accurate models um, for the uh, literature over the last 20 years. So if we take uh, in this case of Visante uh, OCT of corneal tissue, we could do a measurement, say, from here to here and from here to here and generate data points um, based on, on uh, cuts at, say, 0 and 180, uh, 45 and uh, 225 and 90 and 270 and so on around and use these uh, slices here to generate data points around a Cartesian coordinate system. Those data points then, so this is eight data points, can then be plotted on a graph. And so um, if my laser pointer worked, you, could, you can generally see though. You can see the data points at each of the places where the, <coughs> the um, <coughs> measurements were made on the Visante. And I'm sorry, I'm actually going to go through the math a little bit. Um, the top is a generalized equation for a conic section. So if we take the, den the 10 data points and plug them in, uh, we get eight equations. And then um, using a paper by... Uh, Fitzgibbons and Talal, who are mathematicians. Maybe my pen isn't, there we go. Um, there's a constraint, four times a times c minus b squared equals one from the previous equation that defines an ellipse. And so by minimizing the data points of those eight equations to that particular constraint, we force all outcomes to be elliptical. And then we throw out the imaginary numbers. And we can solve for uh, the various important features of the ellipse, like its center, which are in this case defined as h and k, um, the angle of its major axis. And we can also generate an equation for the ellipse. And so ultimately this is a standard equation of the ellipse and if we recenter the ellipse so that h and k are zero and using that original data point we get this equation for that data set then this equation can be used to calculate various things about what our original uh, desec button or any other um, thing that we are modeling uh, looks like and so when we solve when we solve the eight equations plus our constraint for a least squares fit, we get 
this ellipse for that set of data points. And as you can see, it's pretty good in terms of fit. And we can also learn a variety of things about it. So in this case, this was um, a piece of corneal tissue cut with a microkeratome that went in at the epithelial surface, then cut across the stroma and back out at the epithelial surface. And so if we model the epithelial surface and the stromal surface, with the epithelial surface as blue and the stromal surface as red, you can see that we can determine what the rotation of what the rotation of the uh, cut is, how round the cut is, um, how the two cuts are rotated with respect to each other, and um, where the center of the two cuts are with respect to each other. Um, in particular, I'm just going to mention one thing in terms of roundness. Uh, eccentricity may be a little hard to uh, imagine. So a circle, by definition, has an eccentricity of zero. And a line, by definition, has an eccentricity of infinity. And so in between, um, you have a nonlinear <coughs> scale for eccentricity. So an eccentricity of 0.3 is significantly more circular than an eccentricity of 0.8. And that will be important later. So um, these are just some pictures showing some curve fits of uh, corneal sections that were cut by Yusuf Khalifa. And so you can see that some of them are pretty round and pretty regular. Others are not so round or regular. Oops. And this is to remind me to look you up at this point. And I couldn't get the video to show, so I'll just tell it. This is what my wife thought of. Energy was formed. It was science. Boring. Interest fading. So that's pretty much what my wife thought of the talk. Um, so now we're going to actually get to things that involve the eye instead of just math. So the reason I started this was Yusuf came to me and said, I, I've got these, um, this problem with cutting desec buttons. And when we make the incision through the epithelium and across and back out, it's not always completely round. And we're concerned that maybe we're incorporating tissue from the stromal edges as we make these cuts. Um, so the blade, it cuts through the epithelium, transverses across the stroma for a portion of the depth before reaching its maximal cut depth and presumably making a relatively straight cut across the stroma. Um, as you can see from the, the pictures I showed you previously, which are um, data from this, the, the cut shapes may be different at the stromal level than they were at the epithelial level. And also shearing of the tissue as the blade goes through may result in elliptical rather than circular buttons. And so we, I modeled these. Um, the methods were 12 donor human eyes, which were unsuitable for transplant, were cut with a 300 or 350 micron microkeratome. Uh, to save saying this later, there was no significant difference between using either of these two microkeratomes. We imaged it with the Vasante OCT took measurements at the, at, uh, took eight measurements around the circle and uh, then modeled the, the ellipses. And so here's an example, again, where of how the measurements were made. Um, this isn't the actual tissue. I don't have his photograph, so I'm sorry I can't show you that. But they were made on uh, slices like this. And as a result, the average cut diameter was at the epithelial surface was 10.69 millimeters, um, which is larger as expected than the average cut diameter at the stromal surface. And that means that there is a, is what we called an annulus 
between the epithelial cut surface and the stromal cut surface where the blade was coming in and then coming out on the other side. And so we were interested is in is what is the size of this annulus and is it uniform? And in fact, it's not uniform. The average size of the annulus was 0.85 millimeters, but it ranged from 0.3 millimeters to 1.8. I'll explain. <laughs> this way? This way? I'll explain. I'm getting to it. <laughs> no worries. So what I'm saying with that slide is this difference in distance from here to here ranges from 0.3 to 1.8 millimeters. Um, in addition, uh, we looked at eccentricity, and it's roughly the same. There's no significant, statistically significant difference between the epithelial cut and the stromal cut, although neither of them is completely circular. And so what that is looking at is essentially a ratio of the major axis to the minor axis. And so if major axis and minor axis are equal, it says eccentricity is zero and it's a circle. Um, in addition, the location of the center of the stromal cut in respect to the epithelial cut is generally off center <coughs> in the direction of the cutting of the blade. So the blade cuts from this side to this side. And in general, you have the center of the stromal cut smeared towards or smeared away from the blade. And so uh, most of them are off, s most of the stromal beds are off center from the epithelial bed. And again, that was measuring this point versus that point, the centers. And most of the major axis is roughly in the um, perpendicular direction. Now, the direction of the major axis, the more circular it gets, the less relevant that becomes. Because if it's, if it's an exact circle, then you don't even have a direction of the major axis. Because the major and minor axes are the same no matter where you put them. Um, but in general, we found that the major axis was perpendicular to the blade cut. And I think what happens is as the blade, as the microkeratome blade cuts through the tissue, it causes the tissue to deform and smear somewhat away from the blade. And so as the blade comes across, the, s the tissue deforms this way as, as you're cutting it. And that's why most of them have a major axis in this direction rather than this direction. And again, so um, almost to where you asked. So in order to obtain a consistent donor lenticule after you've prepared your stromal bed for BSEC, as Dr. Ambadi is saying, what you want to do is you want to make a cut that does not involve the annulus or the epithelium. If you include epithelium, then you are essentially putting epithelial tissue in on your BSEC button. And if you include the annulus, then you're going to have this transition zone where you've uh, made your microkeratome cut. And it's not going to have the same um, uh, optical properties as the flat stromal bed because you've got essentially a lens at an angle there. Um, if you rely on purely the epithelium to epithelium diameter to determine the size of the punch, um, you would overestimate the size of the stroma where you would get a uniform cut depth. Uh, and I'll show a picture of this in just a second. Um, in addition, if the circle is not concentric, uh, which I've shown that none of them were completely circular, you have to ask yourself, where exactly do I need to measure from in order to guarantee that I'm going in the direct center of, of the stromal bed, particularly if you measure from the epithelium surface. I've shown that the stromal bed is not centered 
with the epithelium, but is in fact shifted uh, a small amount up to about 0.15 millimeters on average from the uh, epithelial cut. Yes, Ann Bonner. How deep do you remove the anterior cut? All the way to the squamal bed? Because I can show some some figures, and in particular the Bertrand that I've shown already shows a, a wedge of stromal tissue at the side which demonstrates that it was not even. Dr. Nelson? Uh, Yusuf did the, the measurements, but he measured the calf, essentially. The back and all the way down. Yes. <coughs> so, in addition to the, uh, the tissue... 
So it's not round. It's uh, not centered. The two surfaces are not centered with each other. The right. the uh, incision annulus varies both in width and in angle, as Dr. Olson pointed out. And all of these errors would be increased if your punch, as you're punching it, is not exactly s centered as well. And so what you could end up doing is having this bed, and this is just a schematic, and punching it such that you catch these edges. And this is essentially uh, one of our models, or one of the uh, ellipses. And so you can see that here, the annulus is actually much thinner than here, and so, and much steeper. So, you know, where, where exactly do you center this? And can you see this, the edge of it here, like you would likely here? Um, so that, that was the first application. And, and as, so as we're talking about GSEC, um, it often does not result in uh, 2020 best spectacle corrected vision. And DMEC has been reported to have a higher rate of that, which may be related to um, having a, a, a interface which is thinner and doesn't incorporate these wedges of tissue at the edges. Um, and so, as I was saying, those, those wedges may affect the optical quality of your DSEC. And w one cannot use the epithelial distance um, or decrease the epithelial distance by a constant factor unless it's a large constant factor to reliably size uh, DSEC buttons. And you don't want to decrease it by a large factor because you want to get a maximum number of endothelial cells. So did I address reasonably? Although many of these patients appear clear on slit lamp exam. And in, th in theory, yes, because you don't have the deformation of the tissue by the blade and, and so on. Right. <laughs> <laughs>
And and I started some of that in a way too, which was this the second idea, which is does how what does this do to the optics of the eye? And I mean you're talking about this, and it's known that there's a bit of a hyperopic shift as well. And so I started the process of modeling, and this is a another Visconti. And by taking measurements, I converted the uh, lenticles into a Cartesian coordinate system and can generate essentially lenses out of each of them. And I, I haven't gone through this, but you can calculate the power of each of these lenses from the, the epithelial surface, the interface surface, and the endothelial surface, and presumably do ray tracing. Um, in addition, you can also calculate the power of the the um, edges seen here, and you can calculate the change in power. Right. Exactly. And if you look at this one, I mean, you can see that it's a. I'm assuming I'm not. I'm not quite sure the optical center, but I'm assuming it's the same way when you do the ray test. It looks like this is a little bit sharp. You can see that it actually is thicker to slide it in so that it comes in higher. I would assume that there's a fair amount of free film in there. Yeah, and I think it would be interesting to look at the lens, say, from here to here of the BSEC button and then out here as well and compare the two. Because even here, just going from here to here, it's not uniform thickness. And you would expect that to change the optical properties as well. So, so let me just correct you. I mean, my assumption is, is that uh, the lenses used for this is this sort of optical degradation due to uh, gamma radiation. And uh, what you're going to get as this gamma optical degradation is you'll get a hard tail lip that actually is a good thing for your kid to have And so then one last thing I applied this to, just to show that you can, you can apply this modeling system to something else. Dr. Mochafar asked me, when we cut uh, corneal grass for Boston Capros, um, he thought if you cut the inner circle first and then the outer, rather than the outer circle first and then the inner, that you would have a more centered cut. So he asked me to do it and um, I cut 10 cornea uh, using the standard equipment that they provide. Uh, five I cut the inner first and then the outer, and five I cut the outer and then the inner. I photographed the graphs, made measurements, and then modeled them as ellipses and calculated where the centers are. And so I, this is how I did the measurements. Um, so I have each axis, uh, and I get eight data points for the outer and inner. And that's the first thing I cut. And you can see I didn't get it that centered. Um, and here's an example of the model with the tip cut. This was inner than outer. This was outer than inner. And this one is a bit more centered than that one. And so if we then graph how off-center they are as the vector, right, as the scalar quantity of the vector between the two centers, we see that at the beginning, I was roughly the same for the first three cuts, whether I cut inner first and then outer, or outer first and then inner. But then for the last two, maybe I got better, or maybe this is just random variation. 
but uh, there was no statistical difference in all five points for the P of about 0.3. If you compare the last three points, it, it comes closer and it's a P of about 0.056. Um, still not statistically significant uh, by our definition of what is usually significant. But uh, I wonder if you took somebody who was more experienced or if I kept doing them, if it might actually start to make a difference. Um, so the conclusion there was mainly that it didn't make a difference, at least at first, whether you cut the inside first or the outer, but practice did seem to make a difference, um, and I improved over time, and neither the inner first or the outer first nor practice allowed me to get one dead center. And so I wondered if you might be able to make a device that would allow you to cut both at the same time and give you a much more centered um, cut when you're making the corneal graft portion of your trachea. So overall, um, what I was trying to demonstrate here was that you could use a, uh, a curved fitting model to model various um, aspects of punching corneas or desect buttons or other things in the eye um, and that those equations could then be used to generate important data to describe the physical properties of the systems and using those mathematical models you could begin to attempt to solve different uh, optical and ophthalmic problems um, such as what is the contribution of shape or truncation in a desect button to the overall final vision of the patient. Any questions?